Good evening and welcome to our event. We wanted to close off International Social Enterprise Day by focusing on the people behind the enterprises and one way that we can help to support your work. We'll start off this evening with a little bit of history. Um, I'm going to be looking briefly at social enterprise in Ireland and how we have progressed to where we are today. I will talk about where Social Enterprise Mark fits into that timeline and also how it supports government policy. I'll then be passing you to Lucy Finlay, Managing Director of Social Enterprise Mark CIC. And Lucy is going to give you a little bit more detail about the Social Enterprise Mark and what's involved um, and the benefits of that then as well. Following this, we will be answering some of your questions We've already been receiving some of those questions through email, but also if you want to ask any questions, pop them into the chat box and we'll be gathering those as we move along this evening. <clears throat> then we will be looking at the six case studies, the ambassadors, um, just looking at who they are and they will be going through this process over the coming months and they will be the first to take on the social enterprise mark here in Ireland. We'll end then by taking a moment to pay tribute to all social enterprises and the people behind the enterprises, without which, well, let's be honest, we would not have such a vibrant sector ready for change and ready for growth. Bear with me for a few moments. Um, I want to take you through a timeline that highlights the journey of the Irish social enterprise sector. I just want to show you how we've reached the point that we're at today and where the social enterprise mark fits into that timeline today and going forward. If I can take you back for a moment to the economic crash 2008 to 2010, Ireland saw cutbacks in expenditure that resulted in all of us at some level dealing with problems in healthcare, education, social care, the environment and many other areas. Social enterprise could have addressed some of these issues very quickly after the economic crash if the sector had had a coherent, had coherent government strategy and structured supports in place. In 2013, a report carried out by Forfus revealed that the Irish social enterprise sector had the potential to generate 40,000 new jobs, 2 billion in revenue if the right conditions were provided by government. The government vowed to take action after this report. And then in 2016, the Thompson's Reuters Foundation, they conducted a global study ranking 44 countries for their social entrepreneurship environment. Ireland ranked second last. Ooh. For comparison purposes, our neighbors in the UK ranked third. However, six years after this commitment to take action within the space in 2019 the government published our national social enterprise policy for ireland very well received then 2020 just as we were beginning and we still are putting um, those those recommendations into action we get hit with a pandemic covid 19. with covid 19 we've seen the biggest disruption to public services in recent history We've, we don't even fully understand the economic effects and the potential knock-on effects with our health care, education, social care, environmental and other areas. Again, social enterprise can address some of these issues very quickly. And unlike the economic crash in 2008, we now have a government strategy and we are seeing the start of structured supports being put in place. Finally, now today, there is an opportunity to strengthen the sector and build on all of those pieces that have been put in place to bring credibility to the work tirelessly carried out and carve out a really important space to aid our economic and societal recovery during and post COVID-19. Because of the progress we've made, we now we have a much, much better starting point primarily due to the publication of the commitments within the National Social Enterprise Policy for Ireland. Government has opened its eyes and can now see the potential within the social enterprise sector. Two pressing issues that are affecting the sector today 
The first one is a clear legal structure for social enterprise companies. And the second one, a more creative approach to how social enterprises are treated in the public procurement process to ensure that social impact delivered by those businesses is factored into the calculations. But today, I don't have enough time to cover both, but I'm going to cover the first one. That's my focus. A clear legal structure for social enterprise companies. <clears throat> this was highlighted in our, our national social enterprise policy document. And one of the calls for action within that document was to conduct further research and analysis on the operation of social enterprises within the existing legal structures and assess the potential value of a distinct legal form for social enterprises. I am delighted, as I'm sure many of you are, absolutely delighted that Rethink Ireland and the Department of Rural and Community Development are undertaking this research. The deadline to register your interest in partaking of the research was Tuesday, the 10th of November, 2020, so quite recent. This is undoubtedly a huge step forward. So that timeline takes us to today. We have government policy. We have the start of government supports and without a doubt, we are seeing advancement of some crucial topics, such as a dedicated legal form. Ireland has undoubtedly made great progress. The signs of action are there, the implementation of the policy, it's taking place. And all of this is really, really positive. It's a genuine credit to all of us involved in the sector, no matter what our capacity. But it really, especially, it's a credit to you watching this today, those of you setting up and running social enterprises. You deserve this progress. You have waited a long time to see these commitments from government to support the valuable work that you do. But when looking at legitimate timelines and the timelines that I've just outlined, we're still in the early stages. If you take the research around the dedicated legal structure, we've just seen the deadline pass, and that's for the initial list building consultation. We have a long way to go to truly advance the sector. And on top of this, we have a global pandemic. The pandemic causes a host of problems the social enterprise sector can help to solve. And some might say the perfect relationship. Um, but this is why a social enterprise mark is crucial at this time. It's the next natural step in the process, a step that can be achieved in a much, much shorter time frame while we wait the results of the research and have a dedicated legal structure available here in Ireland, if that's the result of the research. It's an opportunity that's open to you now. It's an opportunity to show credibility for the work that you do, the values that you hold, and the ethos of your businesses. It's an opportunity to open up legitimate pathways for conversations that can advance the potential of your work and your impact. Last year, we here at Social Impact Ireland, we brought our forum event, Conversations for Possibilities. We supported you and the commercial sector to start having those important conversations, to work together, building a two-way business relationship. We completed our research, um, a profile for social enterprise and their stakeholder networks and engagement, you can find on our website. And we finalized our survey that we're still putting together for the website. And basically what I'm saying is we've heard what you've had to say. We've heard what the commercial sector have had to say and we've carried what the social enterprise sector have to say. And we've taken action to strengthen your position while in parallel, we are all work together to implement the measures in our social enterprise policy. This worldwide recognized social enterprise mark shows not just Ireland, but also the world, what you do and how you do it. Impact over profits, 
profits driving impact. It opens up doors of opportunity and untold potential that can strengthen and drive your business model forward. Today, we launched Social Enterprise Mark in Ireland on National Social Enterprise Day. And we're doing it today, and we're doing it full stop to further support what you do. We do it in parallel with government policy, strengthening the sector, and more important, supporting you to do what you do in a way that drives your business forward, be that locally, regionally, nationally, and if you so wish, globally. As a timeline, you can see the progress made on our little island to push social entrepreneurship higher up that global ranking. It will always be a work of progression. We're still short of the ideal, but step-by-step step working together, we can certainly support government efforts by strengthening our social business and fully unlocking their potential within the business landscape here in Ireland, driving impact in fairness to the benefit of us all. We're bringing you two social enterprise marks and we're doing this so to be all inclusive, so that this is relevant to you no matter what stage you're at with your business. We've the aspiring mark, for those of you not quite ready for the full approved mark, and but that you want to show you're still working within the framework towards the full mark. And we have the approved mark. That's for those of you that are further along your journey and ready to show the work that you do and the commitments you've made. So on that note, stay with us to hear more as I pass you over to Lucy Finlay, Managing Director of Social Enterprise Mark CIC. It's been such a pleasure working with Lucy and her team, and we've really gained an awful lot from understanding how the mark works around the world. And Lucy's going to tell you a little bit, a little bit more about Social Enterprise Mark, and the benefits to you and your business. And remember, if you've any questions, pop them into the chat box, and that discussion will also be coming up soon. So thank you for your time this evening. And on that note, I am going to hand you over to Lucy. Hello, I'm really pleased to be here with you tonight to launch the Social Enterprise Mark and the Social Enterprise Aspiring Mark in Ireland. This is a real huge opportunity, I think, to work in partnership with um, Social Impact Ireland. And we've been talking over a number of months. Some of you may have seen me at the event um, that we held last year. And there seemed to be such excitement about the rollout of social enterprise and the concept of social enterprise in Ireland. And I think this is such a great concrete step to be moving and I'm really, really excited. So as a social enterprise mark CIC, we are the international accreditation for social enterprises and we have partnerships all across the world. And we're really pleased that Ireland is, um, you know, joining this family. Uh, we are working, we have a, um, a, a franchise um, stroke license with the US who actually run their own social enterprise mark on license to us. Um, and we also have a similar partnership to this um, with the Middle East. So it's an important move, uh, I think, to now be partnering with Ireland. As Pauline has explained, we have uh, a number of products that um, are part of our certification and accreditation um, portfolio. The, uh, the main two that we are launching tonight with Ireland are our social enterprise mark and our aspiring social enterprise mark. And the social enterprise mark is uh, our, our primary product. And the reason that we set up as a social enterprise over 10 years ago now. So um, the social enterprise mark is primarily there as a, a, a proof of social enterprise credentials and I know that in Ireland, there isn't a specific definition of social enterprise, 
Um, and in the UK, we do have certain legal structures that are um, social enterprise type structures, but actually we have um, a fairly loose family of organizations that call themselves social enterprises. And one of the challenges that we had um, in the UK and indeed across the world, that there was no one um, definition, if you like, of what a social enterprise is. And so what we did was we looked at what the main characteristics are and consulted in order to be able to come up with our criteria. And we've been working with um, Pauline and her team to ensure that um, we can test this in the Irish situation. So um, I'll talk a little bit about the social enterprise mark itself, first of all. So um, the, there is quite a lot of it that is reasonably straightforward and it's a case of looking in your governing documents. So one of the things that we will want to see is that the organisation has some kind of social and environmental mission and that if it makes any profits, that the, um, the profits primarily go towards that social and environmental mission, not to individual shareholders. Um, secondly, we will want to see that the organisation is actually trading um, rather than rece receiving grants and donations. So um, we will be looking at the trading record or the, the projected trading record. And we've got a whole raft of ways in which we look at what the definition of trading is um, and we can help organisations to define that. And that does include a number of things like contracts. We also would expect that the organisation is an independent business, so it doesn't, it isn't controlled um, by another party that um, you know is led by shareholders or it's not part of government, for example. Um, uh, another area that we also look at is the social impact that that organisation is making. And we make that into quite a simple process. We have a, a pro forma that we talk people through and walk people through in order to be able to look essentially at how they're making a difference. And I think that that's um, an aspect that certainly we're really excited about. Um, working with Social Impact Ireland on because obviously one of our key um, points is to be able to define, um, you know, and clearly state what social impact organisations are having because we know that social enterprises are often um, very good at what they do, um, but they're not very good at talking about it. So this is an opportunity to be able to show what you're doing. And one of the benefits of the social enterprise mark is being able to help to articulate um, that part of what you do. So um, to talk a bit about the social, the aspiring, um, uh, aspiring mark, essentially this is about aspiring to meet the standards of the social enterprise mark. So if you're an organization that hasn't quite met the trading requirements, then um, you are able to um, receive the, um, the aspiring mark and over, um, an, over a period of time, move towards becoming a full social enterprise mark holder. But we will provide advice and support in order to enable you to do this. Um, so the key difference between um, the social enterprise mark and the aspiring mark is that the uh, aspiring mark does allow for organisations that are not yet at 50% trading to get the mark and to take time in order to be able to reach that level of trading. So those are the, um, the, 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 the key products. And we're going to be working with um, Social Impact Ireland uh, in order to be able to pilot this and to test how all of this will work in the Irish context. We don't expect that it will be completely um, plain sailing. There may be some questions. Obviously, there's different types of organisations in Ireland, um, but we have worked this through 
for instance, in the US, where we've come across issues of different types of organizations and found ways in which we can um, uh, accept different types of evidence in order to be able to prove um, the point that um, that that uh, that we're trying to make through the accreditation process. Importantly, um, the what sits behind the mark is a, a certification panel, a panel of experts who look over all of our our international cases and provide advice and support um, with alongside that. Um, and uh, you know there may be some additional requirements that we will ask organisations to um, provide, such as some evidence from uh, a legal advice, in order to be able to verify that in some cases. So, um, from our experience, it's uh, a, um, a reasonably um, well. It's a robust process, but it's it shouldn't be too complicated. Um, and I think it will help. To, um, to begin to provide a, a framework for um, you know, more clarity in the Irish context um, around what actually is a social enterprise. Um, we do have a, 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 an already accredited, a, a already accredited social enterprise in Dublin um, who's been there for a number of years. They're an out of hours GP called North Dock. Um, and they provide the out of hours um, GP services across the whole of Dublin. So they've been um, a mark holder, a very good mark holder over um, a number of years. So we do have already have um, some footprint um, in Ireland. Now, uh, just to talk a bit about kind of the, the benefits of the mark, obviously, it's essentially about the uh, the proof of um, being a business uh, that is there primarily for social and environmental purposes. Um, but there are other benefits as well. Um, and it is also about using that message and that proof to work with your partners. So for instance, um, within uh, the UK context, uh, government often wants to see social value as part of contracts. And I know that in Ireland, there is a similar um, type of um, approach. And so using the social enterprise mark as part of um, procurement within um, a public sector context is um, an important aspect. Uh, and another, another aspect which we are um, really ramping up at the moment is about social enterprises entering into the supply chain of, um, of uh, businesses, particularly corporates who are looking to uh, maintain and to input into the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And in particular in the US, this has been a really important aspect of why they have rolled out the social enterprise mark because a number of corporates have been um, articulating that they want to prove their social impact and through uh, accreditation, they are able to prove that that organization does what it says on the tin. So um, that's a, a, a really um, important aspect to what they do. So um, I would encourage uh, people to apply for the social enterprise mark. It also provides um, some proof to funders as well um, that you are sustainable. A lot of people write in funding bids that at the end of the, uh, the funding period, they will be self-sustaining. And as a social enterprise, that is our ultimate aim to be a self-sustaining business. So um, the benefits of that obviously are, are primarily to the social enterprise itself, because as a self-sustaining business, you're able to um, uh, go uh, to uh, create social value and social impact in perpetuity 
for uh, the lifetime of your business. You're not going to just disappear when the funding runs out. And that's one of the most exciting things that I that got me involved in social enterprise. It's the message about sustainability and how social enterprises can create sustainable impact for the longer term and provide that leadership that is so absent at the moment um, in the ethics of um, you know, governments and, 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 and businesses. It's not just about a little bit of CSR on the side, it's about social enterprise being um, impact businesses as their raison d'etre. So I really look forward to our partnership moving forwards and it would be great to see a whole load of um, interest in uh, this, this new development. Um, and um, I'm sure that this is the start of something really great um, in Ireland. And obviously um, we carry on the movement worldwide. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Lucy and Pauline, for those uh, for those lovely uh, guidelines and uh, presentations around um, our SE Mark launch this evening. Um, there's a few lovely questions coming in from uh, some of the viewers. So the the first question that we may address here is: uh, What is the cost and commitment in achieving uh, the SE Mark? Pauline, I might send that one your way. Okay. So actually, this is probably one of the exciting things because this is a pilot. There is no cost. So this is your opportunity to, if you have a curiosity around this, uh, this is your opportunity to jump on board because Social Impact Ireland are covering the cost for the first two years. And the reason we're, reason we're doing that is because it's a pilot and because we're going to learn as much about this process as you are as we go through it with you. Um, but from a pilot point of view, uh, the cost is covered. And then post pilot, at the moment, we're not 100% sure what type of support the social enterprises might need in Ireland when we move beyond that two-year point. Um, but I think you all know at this stage, we're here to stay. We're not going anywhere. And we always end up giving more than people expect. So that support will be there in whatever way is deemed necessary once we work through the pilot scheme. From a financial commitment point of view, beyond that two-year mark, Lucy, you probably have more information on that at the moment. Yes, yes, well, I do, um, Pauline. Um, the, the cost really at the moment for an international accreditation um, is um, we, we've, we've, we've packaged it so that there is support that, that goes with it. So there's an uplift to our standard fee. So um, our social enterprise um, mark starts at 400 pounds and that's roughly i think um i don't know what it is in euro actually <laughs> 400 pounds 400 pounds yeah. uh, you have to do your calculations yeah. um but that does include um a, a package of support and that's probably what we would look at um following um you know the the, the end of the pilot um, so for the social enterprise, um, at the aspiring mark, it's uh, £300, which I think we worked out is about €335. Euro. Um, and again, there's a substantial um, support that goes with that. So we would probably look at how we might cut that price and, and work out something between ourselves and Social Impact Ireland in order to be able to get the support um, from, you know, direct from Social Impact Ireland. Yeah, and then there's lots of ways as well. You break that down into a monthly payment. So there's lots yeah. of conversations that can happen around that. Mm -hmm. And I think it is important, even though there is a financial commitment to it, um, you know, the, the support that's there and the framework and the structure that you work within, and you know, particularly for the aspiring, because it really is that handheld roadmap to get you to where you want to be. It kind of helps you to achieve your goals. So, yes. um, there is there is the financial aspect to it, but I think as we move along, it'll become clearer the benefits to that around that. Um, but yeah. yeah, those figures are yeah, are what we we were talking about, Lucy. And again, that monthly payment as well for people that might need. Yeah. 
I, I think it is an, an important thing to keep in mind that, um, you know, people need to, to commit financially. Um, our experiences have been that where, you know, where there's no cost or whatever, there, there isn't such a degree of, 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 of commitment. So we would be looking to, to you know, some um, form of recognition of the fact that you are actually entering into a process that's going to help your business in the longer term and that does cost money unfortunately but we are we're in the business world <laughs> that's it exactly <laughs> thanks and i guess you know lucy and Colin, like you just mentioned the package of supports that comes along the journey in acquiring this mark and subsequent to getting the mark um is reflected in in the in the the fee yeah. um, so when we, we've mentioned several times uh, the, you know, the difference between the UK market and the Irish market and in Ireland, the absence of a defined, um, you know, social enterprise um, framework, if you like. So um, there's another question in here, just wondering about the relevance to Ireland for the SE mark when we don't have that uh, clearly defined, um, agreed uh, definition of what a social enterprise is. Um, Pauline, I might ask you to take up on that question again, please. I was hoping you'd come to me on that. I was waiting for that question to come in, you know. There's lots of these little grey areas, you know, and I, I don't think it's just Ireland, but we do have lots of these little grey areas, like definition of a social enterprise, legal form, legal structure around social enterprise. And I think in the work that we've been doing over the last five years, it's probably one of the most frequent questions that come up, you know, this clarity and then I, I'm, I'm not going to harp on about our research, but it goes back to identity and identifying as a social entrepreneur, identifying as a social enterprise. And actually, in some ways, I think the social enterprise mark helps the process and what it stands for, helps you as an individual and your enterprise to define that for yourself within a structure that highlights your commitment highlights your commitment to impact, highlights your business model, highlights your values, highlights your business ethos. So in some ways, although we're working, and I know I talked about this in my talk, although we're working parallel with government policy and government support, the social enterprise mark brings a lot of clarity to each person that is involved in that process around what a social enterprise is from an impact point of view, from a business model point of view. And that in itself helps each enterprise to, I suppose, to define for themselves, you know, um, you reach that quality mark, you have your SE mark, and then you step out because you know now you have defined for yourself you are a social enterprise, irrespective of perhaps at the moment in Ireland, it doesn't quite match up with what the current definition is of a social enterprise or what the current legal form is, is available to you, you know? Um, and I'm very big into this at the moment with social enterprises is that it brings in this strength to, I suppose, to stand up for yourself and for your own definition of what a social enterprise mark, while also meeting that accreditation um, guidelines for the SE mark from um, from Lucy, if that makes sense. Lucy, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that it, from from the experience of our mark holders as well, it's a really important thing for the employees of that organisation because it brings everybody together in understanding the culture and nature of the business. So, for instance, we've had examples of social enterprises that have spun out of the, the public sector, for example, in the UK, and they may have still have like quite a public sector ethos. Um, and so they may be working from the NHS, for example, and it allows the social, it allows the employees to have the understanding and, and, and take them takes them to another level, if you like, of understanding about what the business is actually for and that actually they're in control of the business as, you know, an employee-led social enterprise 
rather than something being done to them. It's about taking control and being a, an enabler to understand that you actually are, um, you know, running the business for the same ethos as you might have been in the public sector, but you have control of your own destiny and you can also add to the social impact that perhaps you couldn't have done in, um, in another, another type of business or, you know, if you were part of the, a part of the public sector. So it's about, it's not just about your external facing me message, it's about your internal facing message. And it's also important for your board as well, for them to be able to understand quite often in a grant led organization, um, a, you know, the board is very focused on, well, where's our next grant coming from? It's a different mentality. And it's about, if you've got business people on your board, getting them to apply their business principles rather than their sort of charitable, you know, let's get the next donation or the next grant under our belt because that's what we need to do to survive. Yeah, and yeah, it's multifaceted really, isn't it, uh, from giving the soul, as borne out in our research, I suppose, at SII, um, that you can see on our website, that a lot of social entrepreneurs who are social entrepreneurs to their bone really don't don't de define or you know identify as that uh, because of that lack of clarity I guess in the Irish landscape and um, so that's great thanks a million for that and the the area there um, in relation to um, the engagement with mainstream uh, businesses or commercial enterprises um, have you found, Lucy, uh, in, you know, feedback from your partnerships in the US and the Middle East, has the, the presence of a mark helped the social enterprises in engaging on an equal footing with mainstream businesses or commercial enterprises? Yeah, I, I think, uh, Bridger, it's a, a question of um, the two coming together. Um, I think there is a recognition within the business world, as I said in my talk, that they need to um, be able to demonstrate that they are actually living and breathing social enterprise, um, social enterprises in things like their supply chain, um, and you know, and in other partnerships as well, in working with um, you know with social enterprises to deliver on contracts, for example. Mm -hmm. So having social enterprises actually there proves that they are, um, you know, actually providing social in, uh, impact. And it's not just some sort of tick in the box. They have got an organisation that is principally focused on that and achieving that as their ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, you know, that the social enterprise mark goes a step further than that, because not only is the um, organization doing all of those things, it's actually proving it. And the, uh, and the social enterprise mark provides that proof and um, all uh, businesses want to be able to show that, you know, for their own reputation, that the others that they're using in their supply chain for their own, um, you know, kind of, um, visibility and um, credibility that they really are doing what they say. So um, there has been, particularly in the UK, um, there's been a lot of interest in this in the um, in the construction industry. Um, interestingly, there seems to be a lot of interest in uh, not only getting social enterprises in the supply chain, but actually how you validate that process um, and in the US it's some of the really really big corporates who are now saying actually we need um, a certification in order to be able to guarantee that these organizations that we're working with are genuine and are doing what they say. Isn't that wonderful yeah and uh, we've had we've been having some really interesting um, conversations with the commercial sector here in Ireland and looking at that two way relationship. And in order to have that two way relationship on a par with each other, it's really important that social enterprises really show that business front 
um, even in business front coupled with impact, because that is what it's about. And I think the SE mark helps them not just by having the mark, but by going through the process to achieve the mark really brings that level of clarity to those in the social enterprise so that then when they come to the commercial sector for that conversation between each other, they're on a par and it is a two-way partnership. Um, and it's one of the, when we have these com the conversations we've been having recently, that seems to be one of the things that they want to see. They want to see social enterprise stepping into that conversation on a par from a business perspective. But then you have some social enterprises and it goes back again. I know we, we, it's, it's connected to our research and our forum event and the work that we've been doing, but it does go back to identifying as a social enterprise, identifying as a business um, that does generate profits, although what you do with those profits is what determines you as a social enterprise. Um, and I think it changes the conversation with the commercial sector and that when we have those conversations in Ireland and we're having them at the moment but when we really start to have them on a large scale um, the social enterprise sector is really going to benefit from that as well as the commercial sector mm -hmm. and I think the mark helps the social enterprise sector to step forward for that business conversation it isn't the, the old style you know handout or the, the step in and step out it's that long term business relationship if that makes sense you know great yeah. thanks a million yeah. a very um quick question here um is this applicable in northern ireland i'll take that one shall i uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes it's available worldwide so wherever you are whichever country you can apply for the uh social enterprise mark the only the only limitation is that we have to do um all of our translation it all has to be translated in English because we haven't um, we haven't actually worked out a way of doing that. But uh, obviously, Northern Ireland speaks English, so we're fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, sorry if actually just continue to pop in your questions into the chat box, and we'll get to as many as we can. Sorry if you've answered this already. I'm May joining. I'm a startup. Is it too early for me to get involved in this process? Uh, Polly, would you like to? Uh, no, it's not too early. It's perfect timing. If you're a startup and you're interested in the social enterprise mark, please get in contact. It really is perfect timing. Um, you know, when you're in that startup phase, you're building your foundation. And when you're building a foundation, you need to know what bricks to put down there so that you solidify it so that you can build on that. And I, it's one of the reasons I'm so excited about the social enterprise mark is the, um, the opportunity to get my hands on those startups so that you can put those pieces in place. The benefit that you will get from that is priceless, absolutely priceless. I think Lucy, you might agree with me there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that's one of the reasons why we developed the uh, aspiring mark as well. Um, because previously we were accepting people into the social enterprise mark, but hadn't quite reached the trading, mm -hmm. um, the 50% trading um, criterion. Um, and we asked them to project, but uh, we developed the aspiring mark as that kind of entry level product. So you have a certain amount of time that, that allows for you to get to that stage. But if you are a, a startup and you have started trading, you may actually qualify straightforwardly for the social enterprise mark anyway. So you may not, you may not need to go for the aspiring mark, but, you know, we can help direct you as to which product is, um, you know, is, is the right one for you. Yeah, great. Thanks. Mary. It is very inclusive, isn't it? That you, from the start of right through to the, to the, the progressed uh, social enterprise. Now we're only out of time. Pauline, would you like to have a last word on this? Actually, I'm surprised one question hasn't come up. Maybe it has. I'm surprised no one's asked about the challenges. You know, are they going to face some challenges? Um, and I was just going to lead on to what you were saying there, Barida, is that, you know, it's one of the nice things about running a pilot like this. And, and especially when we working with Lucy and her team, you know, there's a learning curve in this for everybody. And um, so it's a really good opportunity for us to come together 
and work with as many of you as possible. So if you do have an interest in the pilot scheme and you want that full support, please do uh, drop us an email or go to our website, socialimpactireland.ie and register your interest. And we can work at that together. We can figure, now it is externally assessed so there is a certain amount of limitations as to what we can do, but certainly Lucy and the team and SE Mark CIC, um, they are open to really looking at the starting point in Ireland, the reality of where we are and working with that so that we can really strengthen the sector with this social enterprise mark. Uh, so don't be worrying about challenges, don't be worrying about definitions, don't be worrying about legal form. Look, we're all in this. We know the shortfalls that are there. We also know the positives that are there. And at the moment, we're going through really positive change in Ireland. We really are transforming this social enterprise landscape. And we're looking forward to being a part of that. But we're asking you to be a part of that as well. So do get in contact. Don't worry about the details at the moment. Register your interest and then we can take it from there and see where it takes us together to just to make this work, not just for you, but for the sector overall. Yeah, I, I, I would um, back you up on that one, Pauline. And uh, to, to say people often ask us, you know, uh, how many failures do you have through the social enterprise mark and I say well it's very it's very unlikely that we will have a failure um, because we actually work with that organization and if they don't qualify they wouldn't have reached that stage in the first place so sometimes you know an application will go to our accreditation panel but they will always come back with the things that positively that organization can do and then that organization can decide where they want to take that they may not decide you know they may say well it's not it's not for us we don't we don't think that we want to to do that and that's fine and you know there are lots of valid business models out there this is this is just focused on um social enterprise and and you know we obviously um, have accolades and, and think that social enterprise is the best way forward but we know that there are all different types of business mm -hmm. models that are making a difference um, but we want to be able to promote this particular model that is um, that has making a difference as its very core. Yeah and one of the things when we were um, when we were looking for ambassadors and case studies and we had to take people through that, you know, we had to do a quick analysis of where they're at and what they were doing to figure out just which mark and where they would fit in that process is for the pilot scheme. Um, one of the things that came up, and we see this more and more, is articulating your impact. You know, uh, measuring your impact was a buzzword for a while. Now we've changed the language to articulating your impact. And it was it was making people quite hesitant, you know? So when we were, Breed and I spoke to quite a few people and when we were talking to them, they were like, oh, I don't really know if I can articulate my impact. And we were like, okay, do you have impact? Oh, absolutely, 100% I do. Well, then we can help you to articulate it. So those little nuances, you know, don't be put off by those. So already we have people questioning, well, am I suitable for it? You know, I can't do this, I can't do that. Um, but actually, if at the heart of what you do, um, is create profits for an impact, then you um, can be part of this process. So don't let that put you off. I could talk about this all day, ladies. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> now we're running out of time. I do think that we can all agree that anyone who is getting out of their bed in the morning and working towards yeah. positive social or environmental impact, um, they don't fit into the failure category. Um, one way or the other and it's lovely and um, we're very excited uh, to be able to to um, uh, help those people along the way. Now we're truly out of time so one more time Lucy thank you so very much for your lovely talk earlier and for addressing some of those questions and Pauline thank you likewise and uh, we will be addressing more questions as the evening goes on. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks thank you.
What a fitting way to bring our event to a close. Um, it's been a wonderful day and week for social enterprises. And we're delighted that you could be with us this evening for the launch of Social Enterprise Mark in Ireland. Remember, we are running a pilot. And if you'd like to be involved in that, please feel free to drop me an email at pauline at socialimpactireland.ie. Or if you want more details, have a look at our website, socialimpactireland.ie. And on that note, I bid you all a good evening. And I look forward to seeing the Social, Ent Social Enterprise Mark be rolled out in Ireland over the coming months. And I look forward to all the conversations in private and public around that. Before I go, a very warm thank you to Lucy and her team. They've been incredible. A really, really big thank you to all the team here at Social Impact Ireland that have made all of this possible, particularly um, under current circumstances with COVID. It's been challenging at times. And to John and James at Social Stories uh, for all of their support all of the time. So thank you all for this evening and I look forward to next time.